Welcome to part 28 of the Amateur Extra Element 4 exam study. We're in sub-element 6 echo now. We're going to learn more electronic stuff. Why is gallium arsenide useful for semiconductor devices operating at UHF and higher frequencies? Gallium arsenide is a higher electron mobility. We heard that word earlier in this study. So gallium arsenide, higher electron mobility. So higher electron mobility means that it can operate faster. Which of the following device packages is a through hole type? And that is the DIP. So DIP stands for dual inline package. And that's what they look like. Dual and they're inline. So there's two of them, dual inline package. That is the through hole type. Which of the following materials supports the highest frequency of operation when used in MMICs? That is gallium nitride. So just ignore silicone on all of these. Silicone is not exactly great for high frequency, but gallium nitride is. Uh, let's go back and look at this one. Uh, gallium arsenide. See, so we're, we're seeing gallium in these uh, higher frequency things. So what is an MMIC? It's a monolithic microwave integrated circuit. Mimic. So monolithic microwave. And if you want to go Google that and read the rest of it, you sure may. Which is the most common input and output impedance of mimics and that is 50 ohms interesting where have we heard that figure before 50 ohms is for mimics well you know what if it's a monolithic microwave integrated circuit it's probably going to use for rf <laughs> so 50 ohms seems right right which of the following noise figure values is typical of a low noise UHF preamplifier? I have that somewhere. It's a half a decibel. It's actually a comparison of the input and the output noise. So you can see right here the noise figure is 10 logarithmic value of the input times the 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 signal and the noise at the input and then the signal divided by the noise at the output and that gives you your noise figure of a, of a half decibel for these particular typical low noise UHF preamplifiers so half decibel one of those things we just have to remember what characteristics of mimics make them a popular choice for VHF through microwave circuits? It is their controlled gain. We talked about their low noise figure and constant input and output impedance of 50 ohms over the specified frequency range. I think you've got that one. What type of transmission line is often used for connections to mimics or MMICs and that is going to be called a microstrip and a microstrip is not a tiny airstrip it is actually a um, very thin wire so let's go find our microstrip here's our microstrip and here's the magnetic field as it's applied and there's the electric field you know, it runs at a right angle to your magnetic field. And that is what a microstrip looks like. And it's really tiny because it's for microwaves. So if you remember that this is a monolithic microwave integrated circuit, microwave, microstrip. That should be a good way to remember that one. How is power supplied to the most common type of mimic? New one to me. Through a resistor and or an RF choke connected to the amplifier output lead. It's actually biased. So here's, 
hey, where'd you go? Here is the mimic. You have your input. You have your grounds. And, and they like to be grounded. I'll tell you that. Uh, here's your bias right here. And then here is your blocking capacitor so that your signal can be passed without your bias, which the bias should be DC. So that's how they work. It has a bias, and that can be a resistor and or an RF choke. And uh, that way you have a very low noise input. Which of the following component package types have the least parasitic effects at frequencies above the HF range? That is surface mount. Now, in one of the previous 26 videos, I remember talking about surface mount. If you're going to do something with RF, surface mount is the better way to go because it minimizes the lead lengths. It, it's, it's amazing, isn't it? Here it is coming up again. So the package type that is least parasitic effects is surface mount. What advantage does surface mount technology offer at RF compared to using your through hole components? We've discussed this earlier. Smaller circuit area, shorter circuit board traces, because you know if you have a through hole device, it's going to be this big, but a surface mount is itty bitty. I mean, they can be a little bit bigger, but they're they're daggum tiny. And then components have less parasitic inductance and capacitance. And remember, we don't want parasites. They're, they, they do bad and unpredictable things. All of these choices are correct. Hey, we're back to the dip. What is a characteristic of dip packaging used for integrated circuits? That's two rows of connecting pins on opposite sides of package. Huh. I don't like the language of that. Dual inline package. So dip. So dual inline package. We, we looked at the picture just a minute ago. Inline. And there's two of them. If you've done anything with microcontrollers, then you've probably seen this before. If you haven't, this might be new to you. Why are DIP through hole package ICs not typically used at UHF and higher frequencies? Well, go back and look at that. You got lead length, you've got capacitance, you've got a lot of metal. There might be some stray inductance there. So it's because of the excessive lead length. That's why they're not used at UHF and higher frequencies. Well, you made it through another one. I hope this has been helpful. I'm Rob W1RCP. See you later.